Hello and welcome to Cafe Mutual YouTube channel. Friends, as we all know that from 1st April 2023, there will be no LTCG tax on debt funds. Simply put, gains from debt funds will now be taxed at the marginal rate of taxation. That is income slab of investors. That is according to income slab of investors irrespective of their holding period. So clearly this is a big blow for the MF industry, particularly passive funds like target maturity funds which gave tough competition to bank FDs off late. To understand if passive debt funds still make sense in clients' portfolio, today we have with us Mumbai's SEBI Registered Investment Advisor, Rohit Shah, Principal Officer of GYR Financial Planner. Rohit is also Director of Association of Registered Investment Advisor, Arya. Over the last 10 years at GYR, Rohit has created a major difference in life of many families by helping them achieve their financial goals. So without wasting time, let's welcome Rohit. Good evening, Rohit. Thank you. Thank you, Nisha. Thanks for calling me in. Okay. So Rohit, uh, my first question to you is that, as you know that uh, with the removal of LTCG, uh, why do you think that uh, fixed income funds still make sense for investors? And what are the three key benefits of choosing fixed income funds over bank FDs? Uh, the communication that we sent to client, the question we asked is that, you know, uh, let's revisit why are we investing in a debt fund? And uh, did we invest because of the tax benefits? Mm. And we actually went back to last few years and we were trying to figure out that how many clients actually use the LTCG in debt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we have to kind of what I would call is the reason with Ray here as to why are we really investing in a debt fund. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you really look at the fine technical benefits, the the two more advantages of debt fund over FTs are still available. So one is the taxation is happening at the end, not on a yearly basis because FDs will accrue the interest and you know they will do the 10% TDS and you have to do the differential business. And the second is when you do an interim withdrawal because of the nature of the taxation of capital gain, there is a part principal, part interest or a return. Mm. So not everything is offered to the taxation. I think those benefits have not changed. So I think, uh, you know, uh, we have to keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing is that, uh, you know, when you look at the, the wealth of a family, there are so many ways to look at it. Mm. You have physical assets, you have financial assets, you have India assets, you have global assets, you know, you have growth assets, you have defensive assets, or you have, you know, aggressive assets, for example. Um, so when you kind of look at the defensive part of the portfolio, it serves a couple of, uh, you know, objectives. So, you know, it's an, it's a need capital, uh, you know, the need can be emergency, need can be near term goal. It's an opportunity capital. Uh, because that's where, you know, you have the money available in case things go wrong unexpectedly and they can go wrong anytime. Mm -hmm. And third is, uh, you know, it's a stability capital because, you know, it also kind of gives you the uh, balance at the portfolio level. And, you know, we all have seen these numbers. Mm -hmm. If you look at the data that Phenometrica has done in the India market mm -hmm. and they have kind of brought out the real return. Uh, so there is a good statistical evidence questioning, you know, the percentage of equity in a portfolio beyond 60-70%. Mm -hmm. So that's where the real return which are added to the portfolio is marginal, but the volatility that is added is significantly high, almost double. Right. So from that point of view, the, you know, those objectives have not changed just because of the taxation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we are kind of revisiting and we are asking this question as to, you know, why are why are we investing in debt funds at the first place? So we have not made any significant changes as on today. You know, we continue to feel that, you know, debt fund needs a serious look in most portfolios. And then, you know, based on the specific situation, we will realign. Okay. So Rohit, among the most impacted due to this change are clearly TMFs. So since it's a hold to maturity product, the fund will not get the benefit of capital gains like active funds. So in such a scenario, why do you think that investors should still look at target maturity funds? I think again, 
here we have to think of the largest strategy the interest rate cycle macro micro mm-hmm. and uh, very very conceptually if we were to ask uh, a rational investor here is a product a that gives you 6 7% here is a product b which can give you 11 12% return what is the product that you want i think everybody will want to go with the product b which mm-hmm. means an asset class a growth oriented asset class can have a higher potential and you know if you are really doing a 10 year 15 year 12 year investment then it's a question to really have a defensive investment but as i also said that you know you cannot have a 100% equity in most cases so you know you do need a defensive mm-hmm. uh you know like equity market is a strategy is a cycle and you know it's a peak and a kind of a bottom the interest rate cycle is also the same so if you do get a feel that interest rates have peaked out or about to peak out mm. then i yeah. think the you know there are products available for 2035 2036 uh with these target maturity funds and uh, that is something that we should seriously take a look at it mm. uh the interest uh, the tax burden is an issue but imagine a scenario 5 6 year down the line the interest rate the 10 year gsec comes down to 4 5% for example mm. uh and you are able to exit these funds with a mark to market gain of 10 12% then i think the tax burden will be easily be absorbed right so uh, i wouldn't think that tax should be the predominant need but it should be the overall situation of that family of that asset allocation of the interest rate strategy the risk appetite of the client and the goal situation which should determine i would say that the target maturity funds is a very good innovation in the you know indian mf space and uh, I, you know i have seen a lot of these fund houses uh, coming out uh, you know with nepon i think a lot of these fund houses have followed the suite mm-hmm. uh, and i think that's that's very interesting and you know from our point of view it does remain a significant part of the appeal even today even after the tax benefits have been withdrawn thank okay. you So Rohit, what are the three key tax benefit? I mean, three key benefits of holding a TMF over a bank FD. If you are looking at purely the difference between an FD and a debt fund, uh, I would say the difference is in the you know transparency of a product, where uh, underlying holding and the portfolio constituents are very very clear in an MF. The very very low kind of a cost product, I would say. Uh, and from an administration and management uh, it's very easy it also allows us to defer taxable liability whereas the fd score from the point of view of you know convenience managing prepayment penalty redemption yeah. so rohit uh, talking about passive debt funds as a category so why do you think that investors and mfds should look at passive funds for debt allocation so if you are kind of okay with a predictable situation and you know you're not necessarily trying to alpha trying to mm. focus on a alpha by a security selection even on defensive side then the passive funds uh you know surely can work very well and is very heartening to see the innovation in the indian mf space uh you know the tmf have come and I'm, i can see some variant of passive funds even in a short term category that some of the fund houses are coming out with uh so i think that's that's very very heartening to see and i think it's a choice that an investor has to kind of build this portfolio mm-hmm. in many ways all this discussion that we are doing is all around security selection mm-hmm. so should we do you know liquid fund should we do gsec fund should we do active debt fund should we do passive debt fund should we do ft now the question is that you know all this discussion perhaps assume assumes that security selection is alpha mm. and is that the case mm-hmm. or is security selection the only alpha mm-hmm. so for example rather than trying to save the client from a tax impact of a debt fund because the taxation has changed and maybe you know some fds can give slightly better return and you know anyway taxation wise it is same mm. rather than that if you are able to focus on for example you know it appears that china is running perhaps at a half valuation than india mm. so is there an opportunity there mm. so even that is an alpha right holding period is also an alpha asset allocation is also an alpha your framework that you follow is also an alpha mm. 
right? Your discipline, annual rebalancing, asset allocation, how you handle your portfolio in a different situation. Even that is an alpha, right? And in my opinion, those three areas, asset allocation, holding period, and your framework is likely to be a far bigger alpha than a security selection. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that's what the debt funds, the passive fund innovation allows you to focus on the bigger things rather than trying to look at you know, the least TER and the least tax impact and, you know, this, because there are other ways to manage and mitigate the impact. Right. So Rohit, one last question. So debt funds, as you know, are difficult to explain to clients. So how can MFDs and RIAs make narrative around passive debt funds simple for clients? You know, there is also a need for us to educate the client and, you know, communicate very clearly as to what we are trying to do with them. And if they have a need to understand TMFs or whichever fund, then there's no problem to kind of spend some time and explain to them. And that can be done in a one to many ways, right? WhatsApp, broadcast, email newsletters, mm -hmm. you know, small infographics or a kind of a info, uh, a small info based videos, right? Those things can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think you can also use a very, very simple terminologies that the clients are very, very comfortable. So for example, comparing an FD and a debt fund is easier. I think one is correlate to something which they can very easily understand and, you know, kind of grasp. The second is use some stories, you know, uh, so that's perhaps uh, one way the MFDs can kind of explain these uh, concepts. I think pictures we should use, mm. uh, we should use these concepts and, you know, kind of some broad big fonts to kind of communicate and explain to them. The fund houses have done a lot of work into these. So, you know, I think even if you kind of look around some of these big fund houses and ask them, I'm sure they'll have a lot of inputs to help you work with the clients and explain them what really are debt funds and how they work. Great, great, great. Uh, I'll probably take, um, take a minute here and explain to you that how you can actually use things like gamification and, you know, explain. So for example, you know, I have this pen in front of me okay. and if I have to explain how the market prices of the bonds are related, inversely related to the interest rates, I'm going to say that, see what happens if the interest rates go up, the market price of the bond will come down. You know, because newer securities have come in the market, they're going to pay more interest rates. So who's going to buy our bond, which is now going to give lesser. Similarly, when interest rates go down, the market price go up of the bond because the new securities are going to give less interest return. The older securities have a benefit, they have an edge. So they will, they're going to be sold at a premium in the market. So this is one way to explain, you know, like uh, dramatizing props, they call it props, right? Using props, right. using stories. So that's uh, one of the ways to, you know, use and explain. Great, great. Uh, so with that, uh, we have come to an end to this interesting session. Thank you so much, Rohit, for your valuable insights and time. Thank you. Thank you, Nishant, uh, uh, for giving uh, this time and uh, hearing out my views. This was very, very helpful. So thanks uh, to you and thanks, Ankit. Thank you so much. Finally, I thank each one of you for being such a wonderful audience. Uh, have a lovely day at work, guys. Bye.